Um, hopefully you're not tired of seeing us yet. We've been live now for nine days, um, but we're having a great time doing this Stitch Along event. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Marley Bird and you are on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. And um, I'm here with my friend and partner, Chris or Kristen, <laughs> Caitlin Mall. <laughs> my head is like twirling around my head. Um. Anyways, I uh, I almost said Kristen again. Caitlin is here. What the heck? I just woke up. That's what's going on. So Caitlin is here. Now I'm gonna call you Kristen like forever. Um. To show us how to make some stitch markers. So while I try and put my my words in order. I have not had coffee yet this morning, obviously. I'm going to get things set up in the video description box where you will be able to find the link for everything regarding the DIY stitch marker event. And um, I'll let Caitlin take it away. Yes, it's Caitlin. Caitlin, I know. <laughs> what the heck, man? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are so happy to have you back. Thanks for showing up early with us this morning. And just a reminder, we are here early today because Marley has a class at one o'clock Eastern over on Michael's, which you can still register for. Um, we can get you a link so that you can do that when you're done here. Um, but you can register to take that class with her this afternoon. But we're here today, right now, for our stitch marker event that we're making today. And we are on day nine. Nine. Yeah, nine. Oh, we're on day nine. Um, so you can go ahead and you can check out the calendar over on the blog post, which Marley's putting in the descriptions. And we only have four more days left, guys. It's kind of sad. Like, we're wrapping it up here. Um, but we have some really great things still planned. And today we're gonna be talking about wire. And we did wire last week on Wednesday when we had Beetle on come on and we did the Cone-tastic and we learned how to make our own jump rings. But today I'm gonna to show you how to bend wire. So if you went out and you purchased your wire, your artistic wire that we talked about last week um, and you have your other tools, you'll be able to make another stitch marker uh, along with us. And we're going to be using some of the impress art tools that we had used the other day. So we're really kind of trying to show you that you can grab these supplies, make what they're intended for, but then bring it in another way so you can keep using those supplies over and over again. So I'm going to switch it over here to my phone, come down to my work surface so we can see what we're doing today. Just give me just a second. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, mute that one. Sorry, one extra mute. <laughs> Too many muting and unmuting and everything else. Um, okay, so today, these are the stitch markers we're gonna work on. And if you were looking at the calendar specifically, we called out the heart stitch marker. So that's what we're gonna start with. And crocheters can rejoice. This is specifically for crocheting. Um, we can still use it in knitting because we've got this nice little loop here that we could put a jump ring on and hang it from our knitting, but really this is meant to be a crochet stitch marker. Let me show you how we use this. So yes, this is a knit project, but you can still use crochet stitch markers on knitting for right side and wrong side and things like that. So I'm just going to show you how you use this into a stitch. So you can see, if I can get that into focus, right here we have the opening and I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna slip it right through one of my stitches and now it just hangs right there on my project. Exactly how you would use like a locking stitch marker except this doesn't lock. Um, it, the tension keeping it on there is from down here, how we close we push this together to the loop. And then when you're done, you just slide it back off and there's no damage to your project. So that's what we're going to start with first. And then I have another little um, stitch marker here to show you with a new tool uh, that you can get to make a whole bunch of different things. And this one you could use for crochet again, depending on how you attach it, or in this case, I put a jump ring on. So let's just cover that again, since we cover it every day. Um, we add jump rings, or yeah, jump rings on to the ends to make our knitting stitch markers. And you can see here, we just loop it right on. And guys, this is one that I made from last Wednesday. 
um, I wanted some bigger stitch markers. So I made some or some bigger jump rings. So I made them up and I could have made it in red, but I had already made a bunch in this gold color the other day. So I just used it. Um, kind of gives it a neat little look with two tones, but you could do it in all one color. Now, if you're looking for, oh, I almost lost it, a crochet stitch marker attachment, you're going to want to get something called a lobster clasp, which you can get in all different sizes. This is a fairly small size, so you could get larger. And this little bump thing here, you pull it down and it opens it up and then you can slide that right onto your stitches. Or another option would be looking for some earring findings. And this one is a hinged finding. So you would open this up, slide your stitches on and close it back up. Or you could also just slip your knitting needles right through there. So this is really great if you do both knitting and crochet. Okay, so there are the basics. So let's start with making our heart. Um, you're gonna need your wire. I'm using 20 gauge wire here, um, artistic wire. So that means it comes in a bunch of different colors. We talked about with um, Meredith that it has a non-tarnish coating on most of the colors, not all but the coloring is over a brass or copper inside of the wire. And we're gonna use red today, but you can get all different colors. I like the 20 gauge because it has some structure to it. Like it's not super bendy, but it's not as thick as an 18 where you're gonna struggle a little bit more to bend it. And I'm gonna show you how to what's called work hard in this so that it really is strong when we're done. Okay, so we need this. We also need a round nose pliers. So that's the one with the two round barrels at the top. You're gonna need a cutter to cut your wire. That's for later. And I'm gonna be using the Impressart um, nylon head attachment to my multifunction hammer. And I'm also going to be using what is called a bead reamer with a cup burr attachment which we'll go over this. This is not a requirement, but you'll see why this is an important tool um, when you're making these kinds of stitch markers when we get there. Okay, so what we're gonna start off doing is we're going to cut our wire. I'm gonna eyeball, and that's just how I like to roll <laughs> for this project because it's not, I'm not making two of them exactly the same so I don't have to make sure that my um, cut is exactly the same. If you do want them to be exactly the same, so they're always the same size, measure out what you're cutting and then always cut that same length. The length of your wire is going to determine how large or how small you are able to make your stitch marker. And so I'm going to cut a length this long, which I think is about three inches. Let me grab my ruler. I'll measure it out for you. Okay, so it's four inches. So you could go somewhere between three and four, I feel is comfortable because it's always better to have a little bit extra than not enough because you can always cut it off as opposed to trying to add it on in this project. So all I'm gonna do is just take my cutters and I'm gonna cut my piece of wire off. Step one, okay? Step two is we're going to start by making this round piece in the sec center. And that's where your pliers comes in. Now, when we talked with Meredith, she showed us some different tools called bail making pliers. And that is when your uh, mandrel on your pliers is exactly the same diameter all the way throughout. And on a round nose pliers, you can see that I'm thicker here at the bottom and then it tapers up. And some of them get much thinner than others. Um, so you kind of just have to see what you have. And for this project, I prefer to stay very small and up here at the tip for my center section, but you could really go wherever you want, depending on how big you want your stitch marker to be in the end. I'm just gonna grab it roughly in the middle, again, eyeballing it, because we can trim this up. So just right here in the middle, okay? And I'm keeping it close to the top, but yet I can still grip onto it and have it and I'm just going to fold my sides up and I'm going to let them cross over just like that, okay? So now I have this loop with a V at the top, just like that, all right? So we have this section here done. Now we need to come around and do our loops. 
I want to say this here and now before we get started. This is a lot of just manipulating the wire with your fingers and massaging it into the place that you want it. Um, so don't be afraid to just play around with the wire and make it do what you want it to do. Okay. So now I'm going to grasp it here just a little bit away. I don't know if that's exactly where I want it to be, but that's where I'm going to start it. And I'm just going to gently push my one side down and curve it around. Okay. Then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to look at it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't want so much of a long section here. I'm not sure yet. Let's do the other side and figure it out. So I'm going to try to get to about the same distance away. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push it down and kind of curve it around to give me sort of a heart shape. And I'm going to take a look at it. Okay. Well, I can obviously see that this side is a little bit longer. So if that bothers me, I can go back in here. I can bring it a little bit closer and I can pull my wire again, trying to get it closer to both sides if that's really important to you or whatever else. And then I'm just going to kind of take my pliers and grip it and bend it just a little bit to try to get it into the shape that I want. And the harder you grip it, the more you're gonna get these little kink marks in it, which you can kind of see. So if you don't want that, just take your fingers and um, bend it into the shape that you want, okay? So I'm just kind of pulling this in. So I have a question. I know that yeah. when Meredith was here, we talked about the nylon plier things that she has with the nylon mm -hmm. bit but it doesn't mar the wire. Could yeah, but close? you're you're not going to be able to really fit that in there. I mean, you can try to use your nylon uh, nylon pliers to manipulate it, but if you go kind of small, like you can see here, it's a little bit hard to get it right up there into the um, bend because of the size that it is. Like you can't really get this any thinner um, in okay. length. So it just becomes a problem. And like this one is much smaller because I went with probably like, a two or three inch piece of wire. And so you just kind of have to use your fingers and your pliers, but I'm gonna show you at the end, we're gonna end up hammering it. So you're gonna get rid of some of that marking anyway. All right, maybe that's what we should tell Beetle on. They need like the needle nose pliers with the nylon. There you go. Hey, there's we'll there's the new us. tool. I yeah. know you're listening, Meredith. There's the new tool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my heart shape and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to just let that go. And as you can see here, one side I'm cutting off and one side I'm making a loop on. So you can decide whichever side, you know, you want it to be, but I'm going to try to aim for right here at this cross that that's going to be kind of like my finish point. And so this piece that's on the top, I'm going to have that be my loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here and I'm going to cut it a little bit further than where I wanted to end up because I am going to loop it around and I'm just going to snip that off. And then I'm going to take my pliers again, keeping it towards the end. And I'm just going to grab it here and I'm going to roll it backwards into a nice little loop. Okay. Now that kind of bothers me that I can see the end there. So I'm just going to take my pliers or my snippers again and cut it off. Be careful that you don't cut the rest of your wire because <laughs> I've done that a number of times. And sorry, I was out of frame. Um, I'm just rolling it up so that it touches right there on my piece. Okay, so that's one side. And now I have to do my other side, which is going to be how I hook it into my project. So again, I'm gonna cut it just slightly longer than where I want it to be. And I'm gonna snip it off. And I'm going to take my pliers again, and I'm just going to bend a little bit of a hook to it uh, so that I have a nice little area to go and uh, slip through my stitches, just like that. Now, if you take a close look, you can see that my end is a little bit sharp. And even if I take my flush cutters and cut off just that little snip, you can still see that it's not rounded. Like you can see that really shiny flat surface there. And that could technically catch on your stitches. So that's where you're gonna use your bead reamer with your cupper 
um, attachment. There's three different cup burr attachments that you can get depending on the size of the wire that you're going to use. This one is a battery powered one. You can also get a hand one where you just have to spin it yourself. You can also grab just a file and you can file it down by hand as well. But this is really great. So I put my wire just right here into the tip of this and I'm going to turn it on and it's just rounding out my wire and I'm just moving it around a little bit and uh, it takes a little bit of time but you can see maybe that I'm starting to get um, a rounded end here instead of such a completely flat surface and I would keep going on this until it rounds out as much as I want and as I feel it I don't feel any sharp edges. Um, so I'm not done here, but I'm not going to sit here and keep going because it takes like a couple minutes for it to get just the way you want it. Once again, Caitlin has all the cool tools. Like I've seen that thing at the store and I didn't know what it was for. And I mean, not going to lie. I was tempted to buy it anyways, but <laughs> I was like, I'm sure I could use it. I didn't know how to use it though. Now I know I need it. Now I know I need it. Yeah. So, but just a reminder, this is not the attachment that comes with it. Um, normally it's just a bead reamer, which is like an all here on the end. So it's like a, a sharp file. It basically looks like the end of a round nose plier, but it, it, it has um, like sandpapery type on the outside. And what you use that for is when you do um, freshwater pearls um, or just pearls, if you need to make the holes larger, uh, you would use this to go into the hole of your pearl to open it up for whatever you're stringing it. But then you have these attachments that you can get that you stick in here and then put inside to be your cup burr to get knock off the edges. So you do have to purchase this separately um, and make sure you look at what size you're getting because there are different sizes depending on the gauge of wire that you're using. Okay, and all that will be linked in the, the blog. Yep. All right. And will you also link the actual file? Like say if somebody doesn't want to buy that tool, they just want to buy the file. Sure. Um, all right. Yeah. All I'll make cool sure tools. I go back and add that. Everybody wants to come to your so. craft room. They think it's amazing. <laughs> well, this tool here is truly essential when you make your own um, earring findings, which I do all the time because I it's just easier when I make my own ear hooks. And so once you cut it, I don't wanna put the flat metal through my ear. So I always use this tool to round it out before I would stick the earring into my ear. So that's what this is really great for, but it also is perfect for making stitch markers. Okay, so once you have your shape, the way you want it. If I don't like this shape, I can go back and manipulate it a little bit more to what I want it to be. I have my hoop on one end and I have my hook, so to speak, on the other end. And I do wanna just kind of push it together so there's not much of a gap. And I don't know if you saw that. So it was kind of like out here and you don't wanna just push it to the piece or it's gonna just come back to where it was. You have to actually push it slightly behind where you want it and then when it bounces back, it'll be where you want. So wire has a memory and, okay, so let me rephrase that. There is something called memory wire, which you might've heard, which is completely different than this type of wire. Um, we're not even gonna cover that, but it's different and that has a very strong memory, but all wire has a memory until you tell it what to do. And so sometimes you have to bend it past where you want it to be so that it goes to where you want. So just kind of keep, again, working it and moving it around. So then I'm gonna take my nylon head plier and we're going to do what's called work hardening. And that moves the molecule, molecules of the metal around so that they want to stay in this place and not be so malleable and move when I touch it. And also if you can see here, if you hit it hard enough or long enough, um, you can, there we go, get it to flatten out in the middle. So it becomes more of a flat piece like that. Then, I don't know if you can see this well, but right now my um, middle piece kind of sticks up a little, like it's not a completely flat plane. So if that's important to you, you can also hammer that out while you're work hardening it. Um, one other note is we're using the nylon head. 
of the hammer because we're using the artistic wire. Because it has a coating over it, if I would use the chasing um, head part of this hammer that we talked about when we did the impress art stuff, I would actually chip off the coating of the color and I don't wanna do that. So the nylon head protects my wire while still doing the job. Now, if I wanted to get the wire completely flat, I couldn't use this. This is not strong enough to do it, but I would really only want to do that on a base metal that doesn't have a color coating on it. Hopefully that explains everything. So here we go. I'm just going to hammer it. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to hammer the other side. All right. And now you can see I have flattened it down to more of a plane. It wasn't quite where I wanted it. So I'm going to just rebend it again. And then if you want, you can come back and hit just the part, part like the, the bends in it um, to make sure that they're a little bit work hardened more because I don't want them to come out of shape. And then that is your stitch marker. That was so easy, wasn't it, guys? <laughs> I love that. I think that is like the neatest thing. Like it's it's so it's such a simple little thing, but so useful. And I know that you talk to people about it being great for crochet, but that's awesome for knitting. And I thought I think yeah. I talked about this the other day. Like sometimes if I'm doing increases like on a sleeve or on the side of a garment or whatever it may be where I have to like do an increase and then work seven rows and then do an increase. Like rather than going back and counting all my rows or finding my increase, I will mark my increase with just a removable marker. And then I have a marker that I can count up from. I also do that a lot when I'm working with cables. I'll mark my cable row, um, like not on that cable, but I'll mark it in the stockinette or the reverse stockinette portion. So that way, as I'm working several rows, if I'm like, oh my gosh, is it my cable row again? Is it not? I have a point of reference to count from. So those right. are really useful for knitting also, not just crochet for sure. Right. Just yeah. You can mark definitely your actual fabric. Right. You can do it for both. So, you know, it is great for either. Um, but again, it's more of that crochet stitch marker idea where it just slips into your stitch as opposed to a jump ring. Um, if you really wanted to, you could take a jump ring. Where are my pliers? You could take a jump ring and open it up. And you could stick it like right here into this loop or even in the center loop if you wanted to. And now you could just leave it like this. Let me close this up a little better. Um, you could leave it like this in your thing and now you'd always have a knit and crochet type of stitch marker. And you could lock this into your stitches even while you have the jump ring hanging off of it. If you do both, that would be another great option as well like the earring finding that we talked about. Okay, that's a good idea. So I want to let you know oh. that Wendy is saying that she had a Marley moment. Um, a Marley made me do it this morning when she's running out to Michael's to get stuff for class. And now she's having a Caitlin made me do it moment. So she's got to go back to Michael's and get stuff soon. Um, Sorry. <laughs> people are, are liking this. Um, so Marilyn Lee says, I worry about cutting wire so it doesn't snag on the project. Other aspects of this marker are making with any wire or jump ring. So Marilyn Lee, I would say that that's what that blue tool helps with is so that it doesn't snag. Yeah, so you need to round the ed edges of your wire and then it won't snag on your stitches. It's gonna be exactly like any of like the plastic interlocking stitch markers where, you know, obviously if you're not careful, you can split a stitch no matter what because you're sticking something into your stitches, but this will get it from, or keep it from like ripping any part of the yarn as you stick it in. Right, cool. All right, so next one. I love the idea of these triangles because the triangles themselves for just as jump rings would be really cool too. Like there's a lot of cool things happening here. Yeah, totally. So, you know, thanks Beetleon for having all the cool tools, you know. Um, we love is... Beetleon. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of their mandrels and it's plastic and it comes in a set of four. So you can get a triangle, you get a circle, an oval, 
and um, you get a square. Okay. And so these are really great. And I'll be honest, I, per I got these and I was like, oh, you know, I could do something cool with these. I actually use this circle for um, every year we make Christmas ornaments. My boys make Christmas ornaments. And this year or last year we did um, a popsicle stick truck. And then we put pipe cleaners as a Christmas tree on the back of it. And I couldn't figure out how to get the right cone type shape to it. I actually use this and wrap the pipe cleaners around it. So it's not just like for jewelry and wire and things like that. These are really great mandrels for a whole slew of different projects that you can do. Um, okay, so we're gonna use the triangle one today. So you can see that it's a triangle shape and there's a bunch of different like steps on it. And each one of these steps is just a different size of a triangle. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring out some more wire than I used last time. Again, making sure that I have enough for what I want to do, but I have to wrap here and I'm wrapping at the top and the bottom. So I just want to make sure that I have enough and I can measure this out just so you guys know what I have about. Um, so I cut about seven inches here and then we'll see what I have left over and then you can kind of decide what you want to do. Um, and I'm just using my fingers to straighten my wire. If you don't want to do that, you can use your nylon jaw pliers to kind of straighten it out a little bit. And I didn't bring my other nylon tool. They have another nylon tool that has like three rollers in it that you would hold around here and pull your wire through to straighten it. So there's a couple different options. And again, it's just to get the major kinks out of it because we're going to be bending it anyway. Um, so that's okay. So you need to decide what size um, triangle you want to do. And I think I went with the second one. Yeah. But you could do whatever you want. And I'm just putting the middle or close to the middle of my wire over one of the flat sides. And I'm going to keep my thumb here to give me leverage. And I'm going to bend up and try to crease this corner as best I can. And then I'm going to hold this corner and I'm gonna bend up the other side, crossing over my two wires at the top, okay? I find it easier to do my first loop, wrapped loop here because I still have the leverage of the mandrel. And so I'm going to take my bottom wire and I'm just going to kind of bend it so it comes straight out the top. And this wire is going to be my first wrap down here. And so I'm just going to take my fingers and manipulate this to coil right here. You can see if it comes into focus, right here at the base of, or the top of my triangle, okay? And I'm just gonna go around three times and then I can take it off. And now I have my triangle set and I'm going to trim off my extra. And this would be enough extra to make a small heart. So don't feel like, you know, you're throwing wire away. And I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to, like you can see maybe here that it sticks out just a little bit. So I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and just bring that in so it finishes the wrap around and then it won't cut on anything. Okay, so now I have just straightening this out. I have my triangle, okay? I have my wrap at the top, so my first wire is finished off. And now I need to add something at the top. Now I could go ahead and just put a loop here and call it a day and be done, but we need a little something extra. Where did my, here it is, <laughs> I lost my bead. So I'm just gonna stick a bead right on there. Now you can see it's a little stuck, that's because my wire was bent, so I'm just uh, gonna manipulate it. And so there I am, there's my bead. Okay, then I'm gonna take my uh, round nose pliers and just like I did the other day, I'm gonna stick it here. I'm gonna bend it back, rotating my pliers up, come all the way down, rotating my pliers up and crossing over to make a circle or a loop at the top. Okay, I want a wrapped loop. So I'm gonna grab my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna pinch it right here to hold on to my loop. And then you can use your fingers or I like to use a bent chain nose pliers 
and I grab the end and I wrap it around and you kind of just have to keep repositioning things till it's in the right spot for you. And this gives me a lot of control over where my wraps are going. And I'm just wrapping that around until I have uh, cinched up the space in my wire. And then I can go ahead and trim that off. And again, I'm just gonna use my pliers to make sure that that's pushed in all the way so I don't catch anything. And again, we're gonna work hard in this because I wanna make sure that it's nice and strong for what I'm doing. And I could have work hardened the triangle before I put the bead on, but I can also do it after by hanging it over the side of my block because I don't wanna hit the bead, I will break the bead. Again, I'm gonna take my nylon head pliers because I'm using colored wire and I'm just gonna hammer out my triangle. Just like that. And it would look really cool if you use a base metal. Um, so that means no coating on it and really hammer it hard with like a chasing hammer and get this completely flat. That would also look really cool too. And then you just add your jump ring to the top and then you can either leave it like that or you can add a lobster claw clasp or an earring finding depending on what you wanna do. And that is another way to manipulate wire to make a stitch marker. That is super neat. And here's a question. Could I hang the triangle edge from my work? Sure. I mean, what if I, instead of adding a jump ring to the bottom, maybe I add a dangly bit. So like here's it? my needles. <laughs> and as long as the um, triangle is big enough, you can gladly throw that on as your jump ring instead of adding a jump ring. So, you know, if you want to do this, you could add another dangle on here, or maybe instead of putting a bead after you do your first wrap to connect the two wires, maybe you put your loop right here and then put a bead on it that way instead of putting the bead in the middle. But you could gladly do that and just uh, throw it on your needles just like that. I guess my only hesitation would be I'd have to I'd have to test it out. I'd have to make sure because when you use stitch markers, you guys, you want them to not um, stretch out your fabric itself. You want to make sure you're not getting like any extra uh, yarn right. there that's work. So I just would have to make sure of that. But that's cool. Yeah, it would depend on the size. And also, if you do that and the size is good for your work, you could put a lobster claw on here. So then again, you would have a knit and crochet stitch marker at the same time, yeah. um, just like we talked about here. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fun. I love working with wire. That's that's a lot of fun to do. That's um, when, I uh, see, I've worked with memory wire. When I made myself a memory wire bracelet, like a cuff that I really, I mean, I like it a lot. It's really cool. And um, then I've worked a lot with wire with Vitalon and such, but I keep learning more and more with from you and Meredith, of course, because it's you guys are brilliant and it's pretty exciting. So let's see here if anybody else has any questions. Um, let's see here. Bead Yarn Gal 83 says, does Michaels or Joann's have the artistic wire? Yes. Yes, they do. And you can order it directly from Beadalon as well. I am, um, I am pretty sure. And we have links to that in our blog post if you guys are interested. Yeah, and they also have it on Amazon. You can also buy it online at Michael's um, and Joann's. And I think even Hobby Lobby has it. I don't know. We don't have one very close to us, so I don't shop there a lot. But I'm pretty sure they have other Beadalon tools, so you could check it out. If not, but Hobby Lobby probably knocked it off. <laughs> Well, sorry, yeah, I probably. should not have so. said that. <laughs> but you want to look more for the gauge of your wire than anything else. Um, I use 20 gauge wire today. I would not go any smaller than 20 gauge wire. You could use 18. It's just going to make it a little bit harder to bend things. Um, you're not going to be able, you're not going to be able to manipulate it with your fingers as easily as the 20 gauge. Awesome. So now that you've made these stitch markers, um, how many have you made? Just these ones that you've seen here or? 
Yes, but that's only because I have to make all these other stitch markers and make sure they're ready to go. But like these are so easy and quick. And the thing about it is, is like, if you know you're gonna be in the car or you know you have to go to like a sporting event or whatever else, like this is the material you need. I need this, this, and this to make the heart stitch markers and that's it. Like, yes, we hammered it, but just make all your stitch markers, bring it home and hammer them all at once, you know? And even with your reamer, like you don't have to take this with you if you don't want to, like you could do that as a batch when you get home, but you could literally sit with these three things and make all these stitch markers or even add this in, you know, or any one of the other shapes that they come with. And you can make a slew of stitch markers with very little materials that you need to take with you as like a travel project. That's so cool. You know, I have my favorite stitch markers. They're ones that I've bought from my friend Chappie and they are, are they're wired. So these are the ones they come with um, the earring backing or not. Let me see if you can, you guys have seen me use them before on here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love these things. And I mean, it's just, it's very similar to what you've done. There's the wire at the bottom, you know, the bead and then just the circle for my, yeah. I love, I love these stitch markers. And here's the one that she makes with the, um, my nails are like totally in the way. You know what I'm talking about, whatever yeah. that is, the earring backing. Um, so I use that to mark for right side, wrong side stuff. But I mean, they're like some of my favorite stitch markers. I do them all the time. I'm wondering, I mean, this is very similar to like the triangle one that you just did, only it's a circle. Yeah. yeah. Except she probably used probably like something like this, which is just a mandrel because I mean, you could, you could use the circle one of this, but um, this is also way easier to just turn your circle this way. Yeah, I love, I love these. Like I have hundreds of them because I think they're fantastic. Uh, but it's, it's, it's nice to see other things that we can make with the wire. So mm -hmm. yeah, cool. the, and we got to so see possibilities with wire. You got to see more of your tools, more of your toys, your tool toys. Um, okay, see here. I absolutely love, love, love working with 20 gauge wire. That would be Cheryl handmade with love. And uh, yarn it out says, I love using lever back earrings for stitch markers. Just that's just what I showed too. So that's really cool. This is this has been fascinating. And out of all of the things, this is one of the, I would think one of the easiest ones to make. It didn't take a lot of tools. It's a great like entry level. Or at the same time, if you've bought tools for some of the other stuff, you have them already in your house so you can put them together. Um, I'm loving it, loving it so much. Well, what are we doing tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is embroidery. So I'm going to show you a cool way to take embroidery and turn it into a stitch marker. Uh oh, now I'm intrigued. I don't know how, how that's going to go. That's very intriguing. Oh, super cool. Well, this is once again, a lot of fun to do. And I think we should pose the question to the audience to leave a comment for us um, regarding kits. Do you want to ask it this time? Sure. Um, do you want to see this event happen again next year? And do you want kits if we do it next year? Um, either the, all the materials, just special materials, um, you know, what kind of setup do you want in advance for what's going on? Um, because if we do it like for all 12 days, if we do it 12 again, we're not going to send you 12 of the pliers, like we would figure it out. You need one set of pliers to last you all week. You would need one spool of wire. You know, we would figure that all out for you. And then you would just purchase one kit. Mm -hmm. So we need to know, leave us a comment below, let us know. Um, and if you're looking for all the tools that Caitlin used today, or you're looking for details about some of the previous or the future stitch marker event uh, happenings, make sure you click the link in the video description box below. That will take you to the main blog post. At the bottom of the blog post, that's where each day is listed. And as the blog goes live for that day, because it's it's a two-step process. You're going to the DIY um, stitch marker event page, and then you find the markers you want to make. You click that link, and that will take you to the page with all of the details um, so that everything is sort of like separate. It's like you, you bought a book, 
that's your DIY blog, and you find what chapter you want to go to, and you turn to the chapter, that's the second link, okay? So that's how this works. Um, and you can follow along. Uh, perfect. Let's see here. People are excited about the embroidery stitch markers, and they, they everybody, seems to be everybody's really excited about kits. I wonder if we can work with a company to help put together, like, here's everything you need so that we could have um, that happen really easily. And they love the idea of trying to do something with kids, do something for kids. Um, and yeah, so they're they're loving this. They think you are a great instructor when it comes to jewelry. And I'm sure you're a great you. instructor with other stuff too, but you are, you do such a great job. All right, my friend, that's it from us today over here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Everybody, if you've enjoyed this particular stitch marker happenings, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you have not done so, make sure you've hit subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when we go live. Tomorrow we will be we will be back at noon um, Eastern time. So uh, we will see you here. All right, everybody, that's it from us. Thanks, Caitlin. Bye.